So now, uh, after we have gone through all the details, let's revisit this topic. In this case, I'm going to use the PowerPoints and I'm going to skip the, de uh, the details of the calculations and calculus steps. So now let's do this again at, the, at a summary level. So now the question is, so when the BO number is greater than 0.1, so we cannot use the lump capacitance method. So that means we have to use the partial differential equations and we have to solve them exactly. So this means we are analyzing a problem that depends on position and time. So in this case, we are interested in, in the analysis of a rectangular slab, which has symmetric boundary conditions from left and right. And the governing equation for this process is the heat diffusion equation in 1D. So this is 1D uh, transient heat diffusion equation. So initial temperature is Ti everywhere. In the middle, we have a symmetry. And at the interface, the convection is equal to uh, conductive flux. Okay, The surface energy balance tells us the con convective heat flux is equal to conductive heat flux. So then we did what we did in the analysis that I showed you. So we introduced the dimensionless variables, dimensionless temperature, dimensionless position, and dimensionless time. For position, we are normalizing everything with respect to the, the length scale here, 0 to L. So for temperature, we are dimensional, uh, normalizing everything with the difference of the temperature here. And for dimensionless time, we are using the Fourier number, which is defined as alpha t over L square. And this comes from, uh, from the heat diffusion equation after you set these two. This comes naturally uh, to make sure that heat diffusion equation becomes dimensionless. So with this, uh, with this uh, the heat diffusion equation changes into this form. So the Fourier number is also, we can call this as T star, or you can call it as a Fourier number. Either these are equivalent. So either notations are fine with me. So now, uh, so the boundary conditions and initial conditions are as follows. Uh, when T star is equal to zero, so that, that means initial temperature. So initially, so we have Ti minus Ti divided by Ti minus T infinity. This is the difference. So Ti minus T infinity divided by Ti minus T infinity. Initially we have one. And boundary conditions at x equal to zero, the derivative is zero. And at x equal to one, so we have a convective flux equal to conductive flux. And this is the definition of the BO number. And again, this is not LC, this is just L. This is how we define BO number for special, uh, special if, uh, effect problems. Okay, this definition is different from the previous BO number, important. So this is important to realize. So then, so then uh, the solution is given here. Again, if you don't want to go through the partial differential equation, that's fine you can take this as the solution, okay? So this is the solution for planar geometry after you have gone through all the steps. This is the solution you will be obtaining. So CNs are given here. CNs are given here with this equation. And this zeta Ns are the roots of this equation. And I just I explained to you. So the roots of the equation can be found by just plotting x tangent x. And let's say if the BO number is 5, you'll be just reading the values here that gives you 5. If the BO number is 10, you'll be reading the values here. And these are the roots. Or if you have a computer that can calculate this, you basically give the computer this equation. Let's say x tangent x is equal to 3.5. This is the BO number. Find x that satisfies this equation. Then you have infinitely many of these. And these are the roots. Uh, roots of the uh, this equation and appendix B3 gives the first four roots and in, in general you have infinitely many of these but first four is the most important ones these are given to you and so 
so basically if you go back to this equation this is t star the normalized time this is normalized position the cn's are given here zeta n's are given here so first you find the zeta n's from this equality after you have the zeta n's you find cn's from that equality and then you have the infinite series solution so there is a special case when the Fourier number is greater than 0 0.2 this is important if Fourier number is greater than uh, 0 0.2 you only consider the first term instead of an infinite series infinite series so you'll go from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to 1 you only consider the first term if the Fourier number is greater than 0.2 so this makes the analysis relatively straightforward you only have this uh, you only have one term and that makes the analysis uh, much easier to uh, this uh, yeah, may make it much simpler so okay so this is the first solution a uh, first term solution and if you are interested in solution when x star is equal to zero so if you are interested in finding the mid plane temperature this x x star is zero so cosine zero is one you only have one term okay so that makes it even easier. So this is the temperature in the middle when the Fourier number is greater than 0.2. And the solutions for these coefficients are given in table 1 in your textbook. And as you can see here, so first thing you need to do, you need to calculate the BO number based on the convection, uh, conv convection and length and thermal conductivity, HL over K. This is not LC, this is just L for a plane. So symmetric plane, this is L here. So, and the, these are the roots of this equation. So we have x tangent x is equal to BO number. So these are the solutions for this equality. And so, so in this case, you only have the first solution. So this is for a particular BO number. So x1 is given here and corresponding C1 is given here. So this is for a planar wall. Okay. So same story is also valid for cylindrical object. In this case, so we have a cylinder. Let's say this is infinitely long. So L goes to infinity. So we have convection outside. We have radius given to be R0. And initial temperature is given. And we can analyze this problem in the same fashion using the method of separation of variables and this is the solution you'll be getting okay so here the Fourier number or T star is defined in this way and the coefficients here so the coefficients here so so you look into this equation this is X these are Bessel functions X j1 x divided by j square x is equal to bo number so if you plot this function and find the roots of this function they will give you eigenvalues or the positive roots so you first find these zeta 1 zeta 2 zeta 3 and then after you have zeta 1 zeta 2 zeta 3 you evaluate cn and then you write down your infinite series okay this is how you write down uh, how do you obtain the solution and again it's an infinite series so if the Fourier number is greater than 0.2 if the Fourier number is greater than 0.2 you only consider the first term first term instead of going from n goes from 1 to infinity you will only have one term so it's going to be single term and this is the single term solution and the definitions of zeta 1 and C1 are given in table 5.1 and if you are interested in mid plane temperature in the in the central temperature so it, it even simplifies uh, further so basically this is uh, so if you if our star is zero so you will only have exponential term so you will have the same expression like uh, in here so the expression for mid plane temperature 
for all geometries, sphere, cylinder, and plane is the same. So you'll have the same expression for the mid-plane temperature. And if you have a sphere, the exact solution is given here. And in this case, uh, the zeta n's are the roots of this equality. And then again, these are tabulated. And after you find the zeta n, you, f you evaluate c n's, and you have zeta 1, c1, zeta 2, c2, you write down your infinite series. And, and if the Fourier number is greater than uh, 0.2, again, if the Fourier number is greater than 0.2, then you will only consider the first term. First term. And if you are interested in uh, calculating the mid-plane temperature, so that is going to be c1 exponential minus zeta 1 square f0. This is the mid-plane mid -plane temperature. So again, in table 5.1, you have zeta 1 and c1 values for different coordinate systems. All right? And make sure to remember this is in radians, okay?